How's it going, everybody? Uh, here to tie up a streamer today at Snake River Fly. My name's Dave. We're going to introduce some material uh, available at Snake River Fly called Crinkle Zone. Highly uh, effective material. We tie it into a lot of our streamers here and get good results with it. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about materials and then uh, we're going to tie a bug today, the epoxy head um, Crinkle Zone Minnow, which is extremely effective, durable. Uh, they hold up through many, many fish, as well as the materials holding their shape, and they just have a realistic look that's unmatched. Uh, they almost resemble Rapalos and things like that. They're that good. So, um, once again, back to the Crinkles on, it comes in a lot of different color variations. My favorite tends to be the Pearl. Uh, the, other, the other one's Silver. UV is a good one. Gold UV is always a classic. And then it comes in other flavors, Peacock, which we're going to tie in the Crinkles on Minnow that we're doing here today. Um, but it also comes in watermelon and some other colors too. So Good fiber to work with, a lot of flash, makes a quick streamer. Um, onto the fly, we're going to use a saltwater hook, a pretty heavy duty streamer yeah. hook. We don't, we don't plan on losing these flies, they're going to hold up. So we're going to use a saltwater O'Shaughnessy style hook pretty beefy. Uh, the other thing is the monofilament thread I'm going to use. It's about one pound test. Um, it is see-through so when we epoxy over it we're going to get a lot of visibility of the materials underneath and that's what's going to create that really nice finish on our heads that, that allows us to see the crinkles on underneath. Uh, the eyeballs that I'm going to use are going to be 3D eyes so you can pick your color and size to match the, the style of bug. Uh, a couple schlopping feathers or uh, feathers to run a lateral line and I think that's about it so we'll try to get into it. Alright here we go uh, back at the vise we've got our O'Shaughnessy style saltwater hook in there pretty heavy duty not going to bend out on big fish using my uh, monofilament thread the one I use is Danville's .006 diameter it's about one pound test and it's one of the keys to the success of this fly. Um, just going to start the th thread on there, monofilament. And to get this fly down to the bottom, I'm going to tie in a short piece of lead wire. This is 025. I'm going to tie that in on the midsection of the hook. here. Give it a quick wrap. Should end right about right about there. Gives you a little room to tie off at the head there. And I'm going to wrap that monofilament to the rear where I'm going to start the first material. Uh, the, the crinkles on fiber works really well for streamers. It, it's a little bit thicker as a flash and it'll wick together and stay uh, straight when you tie it in. I'm going to tie in just a little clump here at the rear, clump dub it, tie it in about halfway and then I'm going to pull that fiber back and that puts a little bit of silver in the tail. So I'm going to trim that about right there, probably an inch and a half. Okay. And then we're going to add materials as we work our way up the fly. Um, mostly synthetics. You could use bucktail and other fibers that have been used in the past. I kind of like some of the synthetics. This one's a Steve Ferrar Flash Blend. Just a few fibers of this. Really long fibrous material. Some kinkiness and a little bit of flash in it. I'm going to work my way up onto the, the lead wire tie that down there and fold it back and it'll start to build a profile in our fly a two-toned effect where the lighter colors are on the belly and the darker colors are on the top this one we're gonna have a lot of olive in it so for the belly I'm gonna use the pearl crinkles on fiber all the way to the, the head Oops. 
And to get access to the belly, I'm just gonna turn my hook over here, clump dub it in, tie back onto it a little bit. Lift up on your fibers and you can actually just wrap right into them and it'll tie those down. And then advance your thread. What you can do too is take the hook out of the vise, pull that material back, and it starts to form our bug, a two-tone bug. Um, you want to you want to go sparse with the fibers in the rear of the fly, only because by the time we get to the eye, we're going to have quite a bit more fiber. So we start off going pretty light in the back. As I work my way up, I'm going to do another clump of the green fiber here. Tie that in, wrap back onto it, keep advancing. And then we're going to do another clump of the white in the belly. And what I'm doing is letting some of those fibers wrap about halfway around the hook so that we're getting coverage on our sides of our fly too. And then we're pretty close to the head where we're going to start working on our head build. Okay, just a couple clumps. Replace that in there. Okay. So for the head of this fly, we're going to build it similar to the old uh, bullet heads you see where there's a fiber tied in out the front and folded back. I did want to add a lateral line. So I've got some olive and black grizzly hackle here. Lay that onto the side. and tie that down. These feathers can be a little fussy in getting them oriented and positioning. Tie out to the front, come back, tie in the other side. Can we match up the length there. Okay, so we've got those schlopping feathers tied in as a lateral line. Still working on the head. Okay, the rest of the fibers, we are actually gonna tie out the front of the head and then fold back. It gives us a nice belly look, a nice rounded effect on the head of our streamer there. And on the belly, we're going to go pearl. On the top side, we're going to do a variety of colors. And we want to start with the color that's going to be on the very top of the fly because that will be folded in the middle. So I'm going to go with the darkest color here. This one is Forest Blaze. But first of all, I want to start with a little bit of a peacock just to give it a green. Peacock, I've got forest blaze and the crinkles on. I'm going to tie the darkest color in first on the top of the fly. And I'm going to tie that out the front. And 
Then I'm going to tie in the peacock on top of that. And you're starting to build up some thickness there. That's all right. Cut out that extra. And then we'll do a little bit of gold crinkles on this. will just add a little bit of a highlight. It's got some UV in it as well. And that'll create a nice medium between the olive we have in the back. Build back onto that. So we've thrown all that material out the front. What we want to do is lift that up above the eye and make sure it's oriented just a little bit above the eye. Okay. Then I'm going to turn this fly over and drop in the bottom. This will be a little bigger clump of pearl than we've used on the rest of the fly. Your bigger clump will go here. So a couple short ones in there. Grab a little more. So we've got our pearl crinkles on that we're also going to put on the belly. Tie that in right there. Snip out the extra. Once again, make sure that's tied out to just behind the eye. It's important we have enough thread pressure towards the eye that when we fold those bands of fibers back that we get a little bit of a bubble there. And you can actually increase the size of your bubble by building up thread right now in this portion. The thicker it is, the bigger your bubble will be. But I I'm going to go ahead and bring the monofilament back and turn my bug over here. And I'll show you how we're going to pull this, these fibers back. You do want them separate. You don't want a lot of the pearl in with the, the olive. Okay. And I'm going to do the belly first. So I'll flip it over. Pull back the belly. Put enough pressure on all those fibers. My thread is already back at the rear portion of the head. And I can drop a nice solid thread wrap, a couple, only a couple of them there. You're going to have some extra fibers sticking around in other places. Just try to control those. And then we're going to bring the top portion back. Keep all those fibers in one, one thick band. You're going to have a couple stragglers. We'll deal with those here in a minute. But just pull all those back together as one band, tie them down as one group. You got about two wraps, three wraps, and I'm going to go right into a whip finish. I try to do a single layer of thread wraps so that max uh, visibility will come through that monofilament. And I'm going to tie off the head there. One thing that's kind of nice about the profile of the head is if you were to pinch it here, it's actually got some flat sides on the sides of the head where we're going to glue the eyeballs. Uh, any straggler fibers you would want to cut out at this point and start to uh, make that head look a little bit tighter. When we do epoxy over it, you don't want any loose ends sticking out. Or they could do something funky to your epoxy. In fact, you can even take the fly out of the vise at this point, pull back those pearl fibers underneath, and you start to get a nice two-tone separation in your color there. I'm going to reinsert the fly into the vise. A couple more stragglers kind of popped out. Get rid of them. As we're prepping the head to be epoxied. Okay. Two steps I like to do, and this adds um, a pretty cool look to the fly, is a gill set and some eyeballs. Um, I'll save most of my trimming for the end of the fly, but we can trim a few of them now. 
and you're starting to build a real nice taper. Once again, all this is going to be trimmable. Okay. So to put gills onto this bug, a little trick I like using, I grab a toothpick, some red acrylic paint, a nice gill color. I'll just dip that toothpick in the paint, come underneath here. Put a little gill structure on there and let that start to dry. And as that is drying, I'm going to put the eyeballs on. This one, it looks like these are six millimeter 3D eyes. I'll put a little bit of super glue. This is Zap Gel. Dries really quickly, pretty easy to work with. little drop right there little guy right there what this is going to do is adhere the 3d eyes to the fly so that I don't have to worry about them coming off when I'm epoxying a little more glue on there than I need Pull some of that off Three D eyes will just stick on the sides here. And I'll give those a quick squeeze and they should adhere pretty quick. Okay, nice and solid. I'm ready for epoxy. Cleaned up the head. If you do have any stragglers, get them now. That looks good to me. All right. So for the epoxy, uh, using Zapagap or Zap Z epoxy five minute dries clear, uh, hardens really well. The durability of the flies after you do an epoxy head is second to none. I'm going to go ahead and mix the epoxy. It takes about a minute. I'll mix for about a minute to two minutes, apply it on the head for about a minute or two, and then spin it for about a minute and it should be done. As I mix the two uh, resin and the hardener, there's a cloudy appearance within the mixture. That's okay. That's the chemical reaction taking place. It will clear. Uh, when I mix the epoxy, I don't want to induce air bubbles into the mixture. So you want it to go smooth. Typically not lifting the toothpick out of the mixture. Work around the edges to get all of it mixed well. The lines, the streaks are starting to clear up now, so the process is going. Then what I'll do is I'll let that epoxy sit there for about 30 seconds before I start applying it. What I'm going to do is use the toothpick to pull epoxy off the paper, uh, little shards of it. I want to work it into the different parts of the head. look here and then I'll grab a little smear work it right back on the the band where our monofilament is 
cover that up first. I'll start at the back. I might even push the epoxy onto the crinkles on fibers a little bit. It creates a really nice durable head. And then I'm going to work the epoxy forward up over the eyes to encase them completely. I'm not trying to really bulk up the head, but I, I do want it to look smooth. So the idea is get all that epoxy on there in about a minute or so, and then work with it the last minute as it starts to set up. Uh, you got to have a rotary vise for this. Uh, there's some turners and things out there that do a little bit bigger loops, but just for applying the epoxy, the epoxy, it's nice to have this rotary function. Be careful when you're working around the eye. You don't want to get fill your eye with the epoxy either. By now, most of my epoxy is approximately where I want it. I've got about the volume of epoxy on there as well. A couple small last second smoothings. The shape is approximately what I want. And then I'm just going to sit here for about a minute. And let it set up. So uh, once once we've got the epoxy to set up, it's still a little bit tacky. My suggestion is, you know, least put it in a drying rack. You don't have to keep rotating it, but put it on something where it can sit sit overnight and let that cure, and then you'll get a tack-free head. Okay. Uh, the last step that I'll normally do is take and shapely up some of the crinkles on. It's a really trimmable fiber. And when it's wet it has an extremely good uh, scaly effect. Take a little off the top here. Give it a little more profile and A lot of depth in the fly, a uh, lot, of, lot of good flash, very realistic when it's swimming through the water. Yeah, that's the uh, epoxy headed minnow with crinkles on from Snake River Bring Fly. It Bring it down. There you go. It's, uh, you can get the crinkles on at Snake River Fly or some other fly shops in the area. Jimmy's carries it in Idaho Falls. Uh, you can see this video and others at snakeriverfly.com and our YouTube. Thanks again.